Hey guys, first I start by tracing out a pattern onto poster board. I don't really measure anything, I just draw out the general shape and size I think it should be. I will add a link in the description to where you can download the general shapes I drew so you can print them out. After I have all the pieces I need cut out of poster board, I begin gluing popsicle sticks to them to make them more durable. I use the larger popsicle sticks that are also thinner so they are easier to cut and cover more space. If you want, you can use any kind of wood or plastic or warbler or something. It's really up to you. I just used what I could afford and what I already had lying around. I just cut popsicle sticks into pieces with strong scissors and glued them to the poster board. I also sand the edges to smooth them out if needed. Now I am just cutting a strip of poster board and gluing them onto the popsicle sticks to make sure they hold together well. Then I finish by adding some wood to the tip. And this is what I have so far. Next, to hide all of the popsicle stick work, I glue a strip of craft foam over it. I also use popsicle sticks to smooth out the glue or the foam. After I'm done gluing down the strip of foam, I cut all the extra foam off the edges. Next, I take two smaller popsicle sticks and glue them together to make the weird shape he has on one of his scissor fingers. I repeat the same steps for the rest of the scissor fingers. Sometimes, instead of craft foam, I just use another layer of poster board to hide the popsicle sticks. Here are all the fingers after making them. For some of the blades, I use poster board to make a little hole in them that my fingers can fit into. Here you can see what I mean by fitting it on my fingers.
I want to cover any rough edges or seams in the blades and smooth them out. There are many ways you can do this, but I decided to use resin. I pour equal amounts of part A into one cup and part B into another. Then I pour them into the same cup and mix them together quickly and thoroughly. Then I grab one of the blades and carefully pour the resin over it. I do this over a bowl so I can pour the extra resin back into the cup and add more coats to the blade. Resin gets thicker over time and eventually hardens, so you have to act fast depending on the resin you are using. I then repeat the steps for the rest of the blades. I'm sure there are plenty of other things you can use to smooth rough edges such as wood glue, filler putty, mod podge, or anything else you can think of. I just used what I already had available and also wanted a more plastic-like coating for durability. It ended up working out really well. And who knows, maybe someone will find this technique useful for another project. As you can see, it's a little lumpy and liquidy looking with some bubbles as well. Thankfully, resin is completely sandable. It takes a bit of time, but sanding really works wonders. When I'm finished sanding them all, I have very durable, smooth scissor blades. Now I can move on to painting and putting them together. Next, I spray paint them with a coat of black, then a coat of silver. I have some black gloves that I cut all the fingers halfway off of, except for the thumb. Then I'm going to super glue all the finger blades onto the glove. Be generous with the glue so the fingers do not come off. Now I am just taking apart some old scissors I had so I can use the handles. I also take apart some old eyelash curlers with a wire cutter and some pliers. much video to show of how I attach the handles, but I used glue, string, popsicle sticks, and basically anything I could do to figure out how to attach them. I cover some of the handle with vinyl and cut it into shape, but you can also use craft foam for this. And then I just glue it in place. I also added a little tip of popsicle stick to the handle for some extra detail. Here is part of the eyelash curler handle that I am just super gluing in place. I also made some of the other handles out of popsicle sticks and craft foam. Then I just glue them in place. I also sculpted some of the other handles and used wire to keep them durable. Once the handles are all done being attached, I start adding details to the glove. I do this with pieces of vinyl, craft foam, and popsicle sticks, then glue them on. You can see me shaping the craft foam over popsicle sticks for extra definition. This glove is very thick and I have fabric under it just to be safe. Please do not put hot glue directly onto the back of your hand through a glove without something under it to prevent burns. Then I cut it to the shape I want it and add some more details. Next, I coat everything in Mod Podge. Now for even more details and to make the hands look like more convincing metal, I make some molds out of the tops of screws so I can resin cast them. 
I know it looks like I have a bunch of pills, but now I have some various shapes and sizes of the tops of screws I made of resin. I have a more detailed full resin casting tutorial posted to my channel. I will add a link to it in the description. Now for the fun part, which is gluing them all on with super glue. Even in the wrong color, it instantly starts to make everything look so much more detailed and put together. Keep adding the details as you see fit and do lots of movie watching and image searching to get the references you need to see the details. I am showing you what I did the best I can and I hope it helps as reference. Don't be afraid to experiment with a bunch of different materials. As you can see, I used a bunch of stuff like resin, popsicle sticks, craft foam, poster board, vinyl, wire, and more. After everything is coated in Mod Podge, I can finally start to paint it. For metallics, I always like my base coat to be black. I really like to make sure everything is coated thoroughly. Now for metallic detailing. I am just using basic metallic acrylic craft paints that I got for $1 at Walmart and local craft stores. I then start brushing the silver in sections I want to look like metal. Some parts of his blade also have a more gold color, so I paint on some gold too and mix it with black to darken it. There are also other accents on the scissor handles like burgundy, so I mix some red and black. I also like to weather the silver color just a little bit by brushing on some gold paint and wiping most of it away. A silver paint pen really comes in handy to highlight and sharpen edges for fine detailing. It also helps to lightly outline edges in black. I also add some red and copper paint to give it a slightly rusted look. Like I said before, I really like using a silver paint pen for highlighting and sharpening edges. I sew the glove to some strips of vinyl just for extra detailing. I also add some trimmed down popsicle sticks tied and glued together with elastic string to make it look like a functioning metal part coming from my wrist. I also use wire in other areas. Then I gave the sticks a paint job to make them look like metal.
And that's pretty much it. I was so worried about this project when I first started it. I thought I wouldn't be able to afford it or figure it out because the design is so intimidating. I really hope this video is able to help you have more confidence in making Edward's scissor hands. Or maybe some of the tips you learned in this video can help you with another project. Huge shout out to Purple Shala for playing the beautiful music you heard in the video. Also, thank you to my friend Alan for recording the intro clips. You should definitely go check out their channels. I also have an Edward makeup, wig, and full costume tutorial posted on my channel as well as other cosplay tutorials. Thank you so much for watching guys, bye!